Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. Uh, today we will learn about the gymnosperm. Contents to be covered are introduction and general characteristic of uh, gymnosperms, its habitat, its scientific classification. We will learn about the vegetative morphology and the life cycle of gymnosperm. And at the end, we will also study the economic importance of gymnosperm. After this lecture, students will be able to describe the general features of gymnosperm to be able to differentiate between representative plants in each group to understand the reproductive cycle of the gymnosperms and at the end, students will also be familiar about its economic uses. Okay, students, before explaining gymnosperm, first we recall the flowchart of plant classification. As we all know, that plants are broadly divided into two groups that are non vascular and vascular plants. In non vascular plants, we have bryophytes, they grow in moist places, they are called amphibians of plant kingdom as they grow on land but need water for reproduction. On the other hand, vascular plants are divided into seedless vascular and seed vascular plants so deuterophytes are the seedless vascular plants they grow in damp shady places have well developed leaf systems stem roots but no flowering and fruits for example ferns the seed plants in turn are divided into angiosperms and gymnosperms angiosperms bear true flowers and seeds are enclosed in fruits Flowering plants may be either div uh, divided into monocotyledon or dicotyledons. Monocots have only one seed leaves inside the seed coat. For example, wheat, onion, rice, etc. While dicots have two seeds, examples are beans, apple, and so on. Gymnosperms are the non flowering plants. They are tall trees or bushes producing cones. Seeds are not enclosed in fruits. So, uh, students. Today, we will learn more about the gymnosperm. Let's uh, discuss about the basic features of gymnosperms. Gymnosperm, uh, meaning naked seeds, it is actually derived from two Greek words. Gymnos mean naked and sperma mean seed. So, seed being vascular plants are also called a spermatophyte. What is seed? Seeds are actually reproductive part of plant and that contain plant embryo and store food gymnosperms have exposed ovules because the seeds of gymnosperms lack a protective enclosure and they have well developed vascular system plant body is tall woody some are shrubs like euphedra and they have no herbs uh, the cell wall is made up of cellulose unlike ferns uh, they do not require water for reproduction the plant the plant life cycle have Two alternating uh, phases dominant sporophyte which is diploid and, uh, and the haploid phase are called uh, gametophyte uh, student remember in gymnosperm the sporophyte is dominant phase Gymnosperms are found in a wide variety of habitats throughout the world. Some are grown in dry conditions, so that plants are also called xerophytes. Some are grown at the high altitude, for example, neophytes, whereas cycads are distributed throughout the world but very dense in equatorial region. So, gymnosperms that occupy large area of the world with severe climatic conditions are adopted to conserve water because of the two main reasons. Firstly, their leaves are covered with heavy waxy cuticle and secondly, stomata are sunken below the leaf surface to decrease the rate of evaporation. Here, I would like to talk about the four kinds of gymnosperms. By far, the largest group of gymnosperms are conifers, which are the dominant phylum of gymnosperms. Most are tall trees that usually bear scale leaves and needle-like leaves. Conifers include evergreen trees such as pine, spruces, firs, and cedars. Okay, uh, cicades bear large cones, uh, look like palm trees because of the uh, shape of their large compound leaves. Many cicades species host cyanobacteria, which is also known as blue green algae in the root nodules, and form coralline masses on the ground surface, known as coralidal roots. Uh, you can also see coralidal roots in the second picture. Uh, these cyanobacteria actually uh, fix atmospheric nitrogen. Uh, that are usable by plants. The example of cicades are cycas and zimbia. 
The single surviving species of Gingo fire swoop is a Gingo biloba. Its fan shaped leaves have a unique among seed plants because they have a dichotomous venation pattern. You can see it from the picture. They are not evergreen and their leaves turn yellow in autumn and falls from the trees. It is planted in public spaces because it is unusually resistant to pollution. Uh, Gingo biloba is a dioecious plant having the male and female reproductive organ on a separate plants. The example of Gingo fires are the uh, Gingo biloba. Next are the neophytes. Neophytes are the closest relative to modern angiosperms and include three dissimilar genera of plants, Ephedra, Natum, and Wilvichia. Like angiosperms, they have broad leaves and mostly occurs in dry areas of west coast of United States, Mexico, and Nimbia deserts. Uh, so as we all know that conifers are the largest group of gymnosperms, so students, let's focus our attention on conifers. Okay class, according to the literature, conifer species make up 39% of the world forest. These conifers are distinguished from the other uh, plants by their needle-like leaves and the presence of cones. They are often referred as the evergreen because they retain green leaves throughout the year, which enable these plants to continue photosynthesis and grow, growing slowly during time when other plants um, become dormant. Secondly, conifers leaves are actually thin needles covered with thick cuticle whose small waterproof surface minimize evaporation. So conifers are mainly woody plants and majority of them being trees. Example of conifers are firs, cypresses, juniper, pines, hemlock, redwood, and spruces. Students, and these are some examples of conifers trees. Now you can easily identify it. The first one is cedars, then junipers, uh, pines, cicades, and jingo biloba. Now we will discuss about the morphology of conifers. The plant body can be differentiated into leaves, stem, and roots. Uh, conifers leaves are of two types, scale leaves and needle leaves. Uh, scale leaves are brown in color and protective in nature. Scale leaves are very small, rough and dry, triangular in shape and brown in color, whereas needle leaves or foliage leaves are green and needle-like, arises from the stem in the form of bundles. And these uh, bundles are called fishicles. Some species have two to five needles per fishicle. Moreover, the outer surface of pine needles are covered with waxy layer of cuticle and stromata. The stem of conifers is erect and cylindrical in shape with two types of branches, long shoots and rough shoots. Long shoots are branches of unlimited growth, while rough shoots are of a limited growth. Regarding uh, roots, conifers have taproot system. Taproot is a large cylindrical and dominant root from which other roots sprout literally. The roots are actually infested with the mycorrhizal fungus and are called mycorrhizal roots. A root absorb water and minerals from the surrounding soil. Okay, gymnosperms are um, heterospores, which means that they produce different type of male and female cones. The microspores develop into pollen grains, while the megaspores develop into ovules. The thick, wedge-shaped woody scale called oliferous scales arises in the excess of each uh, breadth scale of female cone. Okay, so this is all about the introduction and general uh, features of gymnosperms, its habitat, its classification, and vegetative morphology. In coming lectures, students, we will discuss about the life cycle of gymnosperm and its economic importance. And I hope, students, you understood the lecture. If you have any question, we will discuss it in our question-answer session. Thank you.